pleasure to be here at the campus and a millennial man. That's the point. The last one is where I hope that I get to because it's the, it's the point that no one talks about or not many people even know anything about. But it's a very important part of God's plan and so uh, I just pray that the Spirit of God would guide me as I try to give you something to look at that's beyond this life. We're so wrapped up with life today. We're so wrapped up with trying to satisfy the flesh today that we have forgotten about the longing of our spirit. The longing of the breath of God. The longing of the breath of God in any born again Christian that God has transformed has a longing to be with the owner of his breath, with the owner of the life that we have. And I would like my best if I could show you how that we ought to look beyond life and look toward what is coming. In eternity. Because I believe that any people that has the Spirit of God and will be reasoned scriptures at all will understand that this life is nothing but a life of misery. This life that we live today, Job said, any man born of woman. Life is full of trouble. And that is true today. Many of you sitting here today understand, and I believe every one of you understand, that life is full of troubles. And yet, we strive to survive in the troubled life we live instead of trying to prepare for that life where there is no trouble. That, that life where there is no pain or no sorrow or any sin. I believe that God wants you and I to look beyond this life while we're working today. While we're trying our best today to do God's will. So today, let's look for just a few moments if I make an inscription. And I will not be able to turn all the scripture. I've just got so much. But I will try to give you those scriptures. And I want you to think upon these scriptures as you go home and read them. And listen to the content of them. Speaking to each of us today. The promises that God wants us to believe in Him. The promises that he has made to each of us. In Hebrews chapter 6, verses 12 and 13, that teaches us this. The promises that God has made you and I, he has swore upon himself. He is the promises that he's made to each and every one of us. He has sworn to keep those promises upon the righteousness of the holy God that he is. So therefore, he cannot break one of these promises or he will go against his own holiness. He will go against who he is as a righteous judge. In verse Corinthians chapter 15, verse 19, Paul said there, talking to the Corinthians, he said, if all the hope that you have is in this life, he said, then we are of all men most miserable. I look around today and that's what I see. I see miserable people. I see unhappy people. But that's because of our hope isn't in this life. That our hope is not in 
the life that is to come, the life of Christ. In 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 4 through 9, the Bible says that today his coming will be disbelieved. That people will not believe that Christ is coming back. That's the general thought throughout the land today. It is the general thought of all that God has created. They have come to a conclusion that God will not keep His promise and that He will not return as He has said. Many of you sitting here today, you say you believe in Christ. You say that you believe that God will keep His promises. But God has told you that if you do not accept Him and believe in Him and put your trust in Him, He will cast you into the lake of fire to burn forever and ever. Do you believe that? Then do you believe that He is coming? Or do we push that aside because we are so busy and so satisfied with trying to satisfy the lust of our flesh instead of the longing of our spirit. He said in what? Today people would disbelieve that he would come. In 2 Peter chapter 3 verses 10 and 11 he said I will come as a thief in the night. You see, though, not many of you here this morning are expecting Him to come today. Not many of you are expecting Him to come before the service is over. So then because you're not expecting Him to come, you're dwelling in darkness. And He says, I will come as a thief in the darkness of your life. You come, but you're not looking for him. He also says in 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 3, 16 through 23. And he talks about, or, or I'm sorry, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 3. He said there would be scoffers before he comes. And you know what that means? There will be people who will mock the idea of Christ. Now, if you don't believe that, that's true. Go, go home and sit down and try to talk to, to your friends, friends and your neighbors, neighbors that, that Christ, Christ is coming. coming and they'll mock you. You go into the place that you work and tell them that Christ is coming. And I believe He might come today. And they'll mock and make fun of you. And you go into the church today. And you tell them that Jesus is coming today. And they'll mock you. The church that belongs to Christ. Why? Because they. Just believe it. But today, you will look with me in John chapter 3. I want to read you some scriptures here. Today, God is telling you and asking you today to believe this. He has sworn. By himself, that, 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 that if you, you will believe this, this he, he will return, return to get you. One, One day, day, he tells, tells us in John, John 3, 16, For God, God so loved the world, that he, he gave his only begotten, begotten Son, that, that whosoever believeth in him, him should not perish, but have everlasting life. But, but then everybody says, I believe. I believe. But, but listen, listen, God knows whether you believe or whether you don't. 
God knows whether you're spewing out empty words or whether you're living at an empty life. God knows as He searches your heart if you truly believe that He died for you and you have given your life to Him. Today here, in verse 17, through 21 is his, his warning. warning. For, For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that, that the world through him might be saved. That, that word will be humanity. All humanity. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed. In the, in the name, name of the only begotten Son of God. The worst, worst position, my friend, that you, that you could, could ever be in this morning is sitting here, here under the sound of the, of the Word of God and condemned. Especially, Especially when, when God is pleading with you. When, when God, God is crying out to you, come unto me, me, all you, you that are heaven, and I will give you this. I have, I have a place for that to be. I have hope for you that goes beyond this life. I have hope for you in eternity with me. But if you're condemned, he says you're only. The only hope you have is in me, and you reject that, you will be cast in the lake of fire. He said in verse 19, and this is the condemnation that. Life is coming, coming to the world. And men love darkness, darkness rather than light. Because, because their deeds were evil. Look at your life. life. What are the, the deeds, deeds of your life? For, For everyone, everyone that doeth evil hated the, the light. Neither, Neither cometh, cometh the light, lest his deeds, deeds should be reproved. But, but he that doeth truth cometh to the light. light. That, that his deeds may be made manifest, manifest that they are walking in God. Today, he tells, he tells you to prepare for what is to come. come. Now, now let's look at the second, second point. God, God has given, given you an invitation. invitation. And, and God, God has issued a warning unto you today. But, but when, when I, I look, look at this, this I, I see that the next thing that happens, that happens to the church will be the rapture. The rapture of God, God, the Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus steps, steps out on the, the clouds to receive his church. church. This, this is, is a promise that, that he has made, made from, from First Thessalonians, Thessalonians chapter, chapter 4, verses 13 through 18. That, that the believers would be caught up in the heaven, not in the heavens, but through the heavens, not in the heavens, the heavens, heavens, the heavens, the heavens, heavens where God is at. This morning, morning I, I say to you, are you, you rapture me? Are you ready for the one who will step out of the clouds and say, My bride, come home? Or will you be left behind? It's real, my friend. It's real. And you must believe it. Or you will be left behind. And being left behind, is, is not, not a thing of beauty. Being left behind, behind is not something you will brag about. Especially if you, you sit, sit in church and you've you heard the gospel of Christ and have rejected it. Now, now once we've been, been caught up into heaven, when, when the rapture takes place, I want, I want you to notice what happens, happens next. Several, Several things, things happen right after, after the rapture. That's, That's why I, I want to get your attention. 
to a life beyond death. Make, Make sure, sure you've got, got everything in your house in order, order now, now today. But be ready when the rapture, rapture comes. comes. Because, because there, there is, is a series, series of things, things that's, that's going, going to happen. happen. And you, you need, need to be prepared for it. Immediately after the church has been raptured, raptured and, and caught up into heaven, heaven, the, the first, first thing that our Lord is going, going to do is found, found in 2 Corinthians, Corinthians chapter, chapter 5, five verse, verse 10. 10. The, the judgment seat of Christ. The beam seat. That's, That's where that all believers that were raptured, raptured out will be brought before the room of the Lord Jesus Christ. And there you will find, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 2, He will examine your faithful stewardship as a believer in Him. We don't, we don't take, take it too serious, serious do we, when we, we give our heart, heart to Christ. We, we think we're all in. And it's all over with. with. But, but no, it's, it's not. Every person that's ever been born in born again, again is, is a preacher. preacher. Every, Every person, person, you're, you're a, preacher. a preacher. And God, God has given, given you the stewardship of, of His, His word. word. And, and of his, his work to this lost and dying world. He's given it to you and I. And, and he will examine us there to be able to see, to see, see what kind of steward we were over it. How well did we do our job that he gave us? How faithful were we to do? The, the job, job he, he gave, gave us. We will all have to answer that. Not, not to be separated, separated from him. Not, not to be cast, cast into the lake, lake of fire. But he is going to examine all of our works and he will give us our rewards. And I, I think, think two things happen. Number no, one is that you will give, give your rewards back, back to him. You will lay on his feet. But now, I, can, I ask you, are, are you going to have anything to lay on his feet? Are you going to have anything to say a reward and say, oh, my master, my Lord, my God, my Savior, I want to give these back to you because you earned these. Died on the cross. You are the one that deserves his rewards. And people will give them back. Number two, I believe that it's according to our stewardship. It's the where we will be seated at the marriage supper of the Lamb. If you, if you will, will turn with me to Revelation chapter 19. Now I notice what, what he said, said again reading in verse 7, seven of Revelation 19. Let us be glad. I think everyone is just going to be glad. I'm so thankful that I'm here. I'm so thankful that I'm seated at the table. I'm so thankful. My master. I am so thankful for the invitation to come. And I'm so thankful that I'm here. And I rejoice. And I give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife 
the, the church, church hath made, made herself, herself ready. Now, I, 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 I didn't save myself. myself. You, you didn't, didn't save, save yourself. yourself. He, he saved us by his, his grace. But according to my stewardship, according to what I did for him, while I'm here, I'm making myself ready. Ready for the judgment seat. Ready to receive. She has to make herself ready. And, and to her, her was granted that, that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the, the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. God is the righteous way, way we live. Now, now we, we can only, only be saved through His righteousness. righteousness. But the, the way, way we, we live, live our, our life, life righteousness, righteousness is accounted to us. Why? Well, because he has given us, us the power and, and ability to live a righteous life. life. And, and according, according to our stewardship, according to how we, we chose to live, to live that life, in order to how we can, if we could just help young people. You're, You're not, not losing anything, anything by living, living for Christ. Christ. You're, You're going, going to gain it all at the, the judgment seat of Christ, Christ. and in the night of the Lamb. You're, You're going, going to get, get more than you'll you ever give here for, for the cause of Christ. Verse, Verse 9, 9 and 7, 7 to uh, 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 e. Right, right what's it are they which are called, called unto the marriage, marriage Supper of the Lamb. And he, and he said, said unto me, me these, these are the true sayings of God. Marriage the Supper of the Lamb. And I fell at his feet to worship. And he and said unto me, me See thou, thou know not I am the thy fellow servant. servant. And, 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 and thou thy brother that hath the testimonies of Jesus. Worship, worship God. God. For the, For the testimony, testimony of Jesus, Jesus is the spirit, spirit of prophecy. Ah, oh, oh, this morning. How, how he pleases. And he, he wants you, you to just settle, settle things this today, today so that we will, will be a part of the very supper of the Lamb. It's, it's a beautiful, beautiful wedding, wedding or something. I've been, I've been to some beautiful weddings. I paid, paid for one beautiful, beautiful wedding. They didn't, didn't make it too beautiful, to be honest with you. But everything, everything around us was beautiful. It's not going to be anything like what this is going to be. Not, not anything, anything like it. So I have to say to you, there's, there's more, more to look forward. forward. Beyond, beyond this life, life than there are in this life. More, more to look forward to. I don't, I don't know, know what that marriage is going to be. I'll, I'll tell, tell you, you it'll be something spectacular. spectacular. Now, now there's something, something else that's going to take place after, after the marriage is suffering. Now, now if you look back, back with me in Revelation, Revelation Chapter, Chapter 5. Everything's going good for us, isn't it? We're, We're in heaven. heaven. But, but in, in Chapter, chapter five, 5, verses, verses one, 1 through 6, six after, after we've been, been raptured, raptured after, after the, the judgment seat, after, after the marriage marriage supper of the Lamb. Now, now hell has got to come, come to this earth. earth. So, in so chapter, chapter 5, five chapter, chapter 4, four illustrates, illustrates our, the rapture, rapture of the church in Revelation. When he when said, he said first, chapter, chapter 4, verse 1, 
At this I look and behold the doors open in heaven. And the first voice I heard was the roar of the trumpet, talking to me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show you the things which I see here It's a picture of the rapture of your church. Now, we've done, been, been through all of these wonderful, wonderful things. And now, and now we come, come to the seven sealed book. Now, now it's, it's important that we, we understand how important this seven sealed book is. Now this, now this seven sealed book is the, the title deed, deed to the earth. earth. Who, who, who owns, owns it now? Who's, Who's in control? control? Satan. Satan is in. It, it, this, this, is, is, this is his kingdom right now. God, God owns it. It's his kingdom. But God, God wants ownership of it. He wants, he wants to take, take it back. back. Now, now after, after this, this, we find, we find this, this. I saw in the, in the right hand, hand of him that sat on the throne, throne in the book, book of the living. living. On, on the back side, side seal, seal with seven, seven seals. seals. Now, now you must understand, understand that was a Roman rule. And, and anything documents or deeds like that, that, that was, was rolled up and it had seven seals, seals on it. And, and here's, here's a picture, picture of what that book. And it, and it said, this, this book, this, this scroll, scroll has got, has got to, be to be open. Because, because the seven-year seven -year tribulation must, must take place. place. God, God must show the nations of the world, world. And, and he must show the Antichrist and, and the false prophets that, that represent religion. And, and the Antichrist is who is in with Satan. Satan. He, he must, must show them, them through the tribulation period and through, through the seven, seven seals. seals. That, that God, God is going to take back his country. God is going to take back his world. world. So, so it's important that, that, that these seals be opened. And, I, and, 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 and to be honest, honest with, with you, at the seven, seven seals, a crisis takes over. over. Now, now stop, stop and think, think about, about that. that. We're, We're all there. there. And, and the seven, seven, this, 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 this road got to be opened. Open. Who's going to open it? So, so a crisis was set up. So then, then they, they did, did a search. search. A search for who could break the seals. So he, so he talks, talks about it. I saw, I saw a strong angel in chapter 5 and verse 2. I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? A crisis? Who is ready? So a search starts. He said, well, why would you do that? Got to prove something. When, when somebody is worthy of something, all else must be put down. So what did it say? Verse 3. Yeah, and, and no man in heaven. No man in heaven. John the Baptist didn't do it because in his time of weakness he died in Jesus. Nobody in heaven. That's, That's where they're at. Nobody. He said, 
So, so they, they went there. Does anybody they went there. No. When nobody on earth could do it. So, so then, then he said, they went under the earth. So they went back to the Hades. Well, well, nobody down there where they don't need it. So what are they going to do? There's, There's nobody in heaven. There's, There's nobody on the earth. earth. There's, There's nobody under the earth. earth.
and have a true relation with your son. So, the tribulation period is now underway. The tribulation period, the seven years, life has never been on the face of the earth. The seven years, could I just stop right here and say this? If only Israel could understand. If only that little boy or girl or that man and woman in Israel today could understand the truth and give their life to Jesus and go up with the rapture, they could avoid the tribulation period. You are that are here sitting in the loss today. If you give your heart to Jesus and mean it, you would be going up in the rapture and you would not have to be a part of the tribulation. If we think COVID's bad, COVID's nothing. It's a drop in the bucket. COVID is just full of junk that nobody knows anything. Don't know nobody know what the truth is. We like to, but we don't. But I guarantee you one thing, that seven years of tribulation, you'll know the truth. You will know the truth because God has unleashed Satan. And he has unleashed the Antichrist. He has unleashed the false prophet. And what they're going to do to this world, no man could have ever imagined. Now, if you will, let's go back to Zechariah. Zechariah, chapter 14. And I want to read. The seven year tribulation period has now come to an end. And we're taking the next step. And that was found in Revelation chapter 19, beginning verse 11. That was the second coming of Christ. But in Zechariah chapter 14, verses 1 through 5, Behold, the day of the Lord comes. And thy soul shall be divided in the midst of thee. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken, and the houses rifled, and the women travailed, and half of the city shall go forth into captivity. And the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. Listen. And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem, on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west. And there shall be a very great valley, and half of the mountain shall remove toward the north and half toward the south. And ye shall, shall flee to the valley of the mountain, mountain for the, for the valley, valley of the mountain shall reach unto the east. Yea. Ye shall, shall flee, flee like, like as, as you fled, fled from, from the fore. The, the earthquake in the days, days of Uzziah, King, King of Judah. Judah. And, and the Lord, Lord my God, God shall come, come and all of the saints, saints with him. Back, Back on again. 
Pas. Pas. That gives, that gives us a, a, a picture, picture of it. But what, what happens in that battle? All the world leaders, leaders and the, and the soldiers. soldiers. Now remember, remember what I said, said here. All the world leaders, leaders and the, the soldiers, soldiers under the command of these leaders. leaders. And there will be nations, nations from all over the world that, that will come to do, do that. They're coming. They come, and you, and say, you say, well, are they, are they, they, they coming, coming to, 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 to take, take Jerusalem? Jerusalem? No, no, they already are. Now, what are they doing? They're, they're coming. coming. And they, and they are, are planning. planning. The battle, battle of Jesus. Jesus. Could you, Could you tell, tell me why, why all, all the nations, nations of the world would come together and unite in their, in their evil, evil and bring all, all of the war power, power together, together to Jerusalem? To Jerusalem? Why, why would they come? Because of somebody. They, they, go, they, they got ready. ready. Because they knew Jesus, Jesus was coming. coming. You see, you see, at the end, end of the tribulation, you, you, know, you know, Jesus is coming. But there's, 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 there's another reason, reason to do. Look at okay. Revelation chapter, chapter 19. 19. Just let, let me read, 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 start reading, start reading in 7, verse 17. 17. And I, and I saw, saw an angel standing, standing in the sun. And he, and he cried with a loud voice, saying, All the clouds that lie in the midst of heaven, come and, come and gather, gather yourself, yourself together, together unto the supper of the great God. God. That supper, supper is the world, world leaders and their armies. armies. That ye may eat the flesh of kings. kings. And the, and, the and the flesh of captains, and the flesh of mighty, mighty men, and the, and the flesh, flesh of horses, um, um, and, and of those, those that settle them. And, them and, so so and, the, and the flesh, flesh of all men, men both free and bond, bond both, both small, small and great. And I saw the beasts, and the kings of the earth, and their armies gathered together to make war. Oh! Had you, Had you read, read that, that scripture before? <laughs> what what in the world did that just say? say? I, I bet, bet you thought I was wrong, didn't you? I, I bet you thought I was talking, talking out of my head when, when I, I said, said they, they had come to, to fight, fight Jesus. Jesus. Let's, Let's read it again. And I, and I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and the armies gathered together, together to, to make war against, against him, him that set on the horse, horse and against, against his, his army. army. Now, now go back, back to, to chapter 19, 19 verse 11. 11. And, and I, I saw heaven open, open and the whole horse and, 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 and he that, that set, set upon, upon him, him was called faithful and true and righteous does judge and make war. Going down, down look further, verse 14, and the, and the armies, armies which were in heaven following him. Do you, Do you know, know if you give your life to Christ? And if you 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 want to you, you, you be one of his armies. armies. You be, you be one, one of the people his armies, armies coming come back. back. But can, but can I, I tell you, we're not going to have to strike a leg. Because he's, he's got this destroy of the Lord of God. God. And, and here's another, another reason. reason. Look at verse 19. 19. Revelation 19. 19. 19. And, and I, I saw, saw the beast, the Antichrist. 
I'm I, a part of verse 20. 20. I'm sorry, sorry to read that. And the, and the beast, beast was, was taken, taken with him, him the false prophet, that did the miracles before him. With, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast and them that worshipped his image. These were both cast. Yes. What's, What's the next word? A lie. They, they were cast alive into the lake, lake of fire, burning, burning with the brimstone. Did you know, know the Antichrist and the false prophet will be, will be the, the first two occupants of the lake, lake of fire? You know what I'm saying? And it's this time. time. In verse, verse chapter, chapter 20. 20. And I, I saw, saw an angel go down, down out of the bottomless pit, and a great chain in his hand. And, and he, he laid hold of the dragon, that, that old serpent, which, that old serpent, which, which is, is the devil, and, and Satan, and, and bound him for a thousand years, years and, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up. And set, and set a seal on him, him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years, years should be fulfilled. And after, and after that, that, he must be loose, loose for a little season. Now, now, can I, can I just, I'm not going to have to close this room. I'm not, not even going to get to the 75 day interval. interval. Can you, Can you imagine, imagine living with, with Jesus and not, and not have to worry about your Savior? The 75, the 75 days, days are going to be interesting, too. Because we're going to be there. Do you, you want to be there? Do you, you want to be one, one of those that die and all again? And all again? Do you, Do you want, want to be one, one of those that die, die in, the in the tribulation, tribulation period? Do you, you want to be one, one of those that die in the tribulation If you, if you don't, don't, he gives you, you an invitation. Receive, receive him today. And you're so safe. Give, give him your life. life. No, no matter, matter what you're doing and, and what, what you think, his joy. joy. Today, Today, I got news for you. Joy, Joy with which Jesus is in eternity, is much greater, greater than any joy, joy you have, have today. So, so if, if you have, have please, 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 please give, give your life to Christ. Talk, talk to others. Let us bow our heads and stand if you will.